Hello and welcome to Professor Pincushion. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about how to sew on a collar. I'm going to be using Vogue 8927 for this demonstration, showing you how to sew a traditional looking collar and also how to attach it to your shirt. Then we're going to touch on McCall's 6846 about the curvy collar and I'm going to show you how to get a nice smooth curve. So let's go ahead and get started. If you haven't already, apply your fusible interfacing to your collar pieces. The interfacing will make your collars more stiff, which is what we want. Now usually when you cut out your pieces in fabric, you'll cut up twice the number than you would for interfacing. For example, this piece, I need to cut two out of my fabric, one out of my interfacing, because the interfacing only goes with one of those pieces. I don't put interfacing in all my collar pieces. I have the wrong side facing up, the side of the interfacing where you can feel the texture in the glue bubbles, that goes to the wrong side. I also trim my fusible interfacing down a little bit so you can see it's a little bit smaller. We don't really need fusible interfacing in the seam allowance. I already have my iron heating up. I'm going to carefully place down a press cloth over my piece, being careful not to shift anything underneath. Go ahead and dampen it. And then I'm going to lay my iron in one section for about five seconds or so. Then carefully lift it up and then move it over to the next section until the whole piece is fused together. You're then going to pair one piece that has interfacing with a collar section that does not have any interfacing. You can see this is the same exact piece, there's just no interfacing. You need to put them right side to right side and just line up the piece directly and you can pin it all together. You're going to be sewing a seam around all the edges that usually don't have any notches. So this has a double notch on top so we're not going to stitch here because we still need to flip it right side out. So I'm going to sew here, across the bottom, and then across this other side as well. So whatever your seam allowance is, that's what you're going to do for your collar. It's important when sewing your collars to have very crisp edges. So this comes from sewing your seam. So if I'm doing a sharp corner like this, what I need to do is I get to about 5 eighths of an inch away from the edge, which is what my seam allowance is put my needle in, lift my foot, and then pivot the whole fabric. That way I can have a nice sharp corner. When you finish with your seams, you're going to go ahead and trim your seam allowance. You can see I've already done that here. So you're leaving about a quarter of an inch left over. I'm also going to do down here and on this side as well. Now you'll notice I cut off the corner on this side. I still have to do this side. And the reason why you cut off the corner is because you're taking all this fabric when you flip it right side out and then you're trying to bunch it in this little tiny area right here. So if you want it to lie flat, cut off the corners. I also have another example. So now this is a rounded Peter Pan type collar. You'll see that the side that has the notch is a side that's still open. And like the other one, you take one collar piece without interfacing and you stitch it to one that has interfacing. Because it is curved, I'm also going to trim it down and leaving about a quarter of an inch, but also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim notches. Whenever you have curved seams, you always trim little notches like this. Just make sure that you don't cut into your stitches. And I do it for every half inch or so for all the curvy areas because it's the same thing. You're trying to squeeze in all this extra fabric into a smaller area. So if we try to get rid of some of the fabric by doing this, then it'll lie a lot flatter. And then on this, I have another corner, so then I can go ahead and cut this corner off as well. So there's the corner, and then I would go ahead and trim my seam allowances. Turn your collar right side out and press it. And I actually already have my green one done. So it's all nice and clean. So I pressed it. This end that's still open up, up here, we're gonna do a basting stitch to close this and keep our pieces together. And then on the nice folded edge we have down here, we're gonna be doing an edge stitch. 
For the basting stitch, you're going to use the longest stitch on your machine. You don't have to worry about any back stitching. This is just a temporary stitch in order to hold our raw edges together. The edge stitch is a stitch just to finish our collar. So it's right on the edge. You can see about an eighth of an inch away from the folded edge. And you're doing a regular length stitch and you are doing back stitching. All right, so here's what my collars look like so far. Basting stitch done, and then I have the edge stitch on the other side. Now with some collars, like with my Peter Pan collar example here, this one will end up just getting stitched directly onto the top of my bodice. The traditional collars, like this one here, actually get stitched to a collar band. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. You're gonna grab your collar band piece that has the fusible interfacing to it. So there should be two of these pieces, one with the fusible interfacing, that's the one I'm using right now. That side is up. On the one long side that you have here, you're gonna fold up from right side to wrong side, whatever your seam allowance is. So I'm gonna fold up 5 eighths of an inch and I'm gonna press it. After it's pressed, you're gonna trim off about a quarter of an inch from the raw edge, leaving 3 eighths of an inch left. Take your other collar band piece that does not have the interfacing and lay it right side up. Then you're gonna take your collar piece and you're gonna lay it right on top of it and the side of your collar that has the interfacing. If I was to open this up, you'll see the interfacing on this side. This is the side that goes towards the collar band here. You're gonna match up any notches that you have. This is not gonna go to the end. Instead, it's gonna go to the marks that I have on the side here. You're gonna force the shape to match each other. So you're just gonna pin it all into place. Then I'm gonna grab my other collar band and I'm basically making a sandwich with all my pieces. Again, matching the double notches. The collar band pieces should match here at the end. Again, this does not come to the end. It's just these two. After you pin all this, you can do a basting stitch just to hold everything together. Then you're gonna do a final stitch. This is gonna be at your seam allowance. You're gonna go up here from the folded edge where we just trimmed right here, up, across the top, and then down to the folded edge. Just like you did with the seam of your collar, you can go ahead, trim it, cut off the corners. You're gonna take the collar band, you're gonna pull it away from the collar because we're flipping everything right side out. And then you can go ahead and press this. All right, let's go ahead and attach our collar to our shirt. So this is the neckline of my shirt. It's right side facing up. Here's the back of the shirt and here's the two sides of the front of the shirt. We're gonna grab our collar. Now the collar band that has the raw edge and no interfacing, this is the side that we're going to pin to our neckline. You're just gonna keep this folded side of the collar band out of the way. So I'm gonna do the edges first. I'll grab some pins here. And if you have any notches, such as I have single notch and a single notch, so I'm gonna match those. I have my shoulder seams, and I have these little marks that also match the shoulder seams. So I'm gonna pin all of this into place, and you just kind of have to force both the pieces to work together. You're gonna to go ahead, stitch your seam allowance, attaching the collar band, this section only, to the top of your shirt. Again, we're keeping everything else out of the way. We're looking at the inside of the shirt or the wrong side. Here's the seam we just created. I went ahead and trimmed it. Then you're gonna take it, you're gonna press it up towards the collar because then you're gonna take this folded edge and you're gonna put it right over all this raw edge. So it's all gonna be hidden. And then we're gonna slip stitch it. So that's gonna be a hand sewing stitch that we're gonna do right along this edge to keep everything enclosed. For the slip stitch, I'm gonna be going between the two sides. So I'm gonna be going from the folded edge of the gray and then grabbing a little bit of white, which is my shirt. Use a matching thread. I'm just using a contrasting one so it's a little bit easier to see. So you can see my thread is coming out of this folded edge of the gray. So the next part is I'm gonna grab a little bit of the white fabric right underneath it. Pull this through and then grab a little bit of the gray and I'm trying to stay as close as I can to the folded edge as I can, because then it's not gonna show up as much. Then 
just tuck this in. I'm gonna grab a little bit of the white and I'm gonna do this for the whole length of the way. So you're just going back and forth between the two sides. The last thing you need to do in order to finish your collar is to do an edge stitch around the perimeter of the collar band. So again, you're just getting as close to the edge as you can get to make it look nice and neat. Let's take a look at the finished collar. You can see it's all attached to my shirt now and it looks very professional. Good luck in making your own. New tutorials are released weekly, so please subscribe to be notified of the next release. Make sure to check out our other videos and visit ProfessorPincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 200 sewing video tutorials, including our exclusive premium content. Our premium membership is only $5 a month for unlimited access and only available at ProfessorPincushion.com. Also, don't forget to download our mobile app for videos on the go. Thanks for watching.